Torace. Welcome to Linear Rock, Mark. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. Thanks for the invitation. It's a pleasure to have you here. You know, I love you, Mark. I love your voice. I love your music. Thank you. <laughs> we know you, of course, as Crocus frontman and singer. But yes. now you have also a new career. And I like to say, you know, that you have always a very high energy. It's like a slap in the face, but always with a big smile on your face, which yes. is the best. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, I try my best. Stay positive, you know. <laughs> right. So uh, it, it was the time, you know, to say goodbye. Adios Amigos uh, in uh, yeah. 2019 with Crocus. Uh, the band split, but you couldn't resist, let's say. So you're back. <laughs> I'm back, yeah. And we're happy about <laughs> it. When did you actually realize, you know, that you wanted to continue and how the idea to start the Storace adventure came along? Well, uh, I've been thinking about a solo thing for a long, long time, but I never had the opportunity to do it because I never had the time. And always in between Crocus stuff, whenever Crocus took time off, I tended to fill it up with other things, you know, uh, with Rock Meets Classic or recording an album with other guys, with Biss or Warrior, with Amen or whatever. And uh, of course, I have, I have the family raising two kids and stuff with my wife. And uh, so now I would, I don't want to say thank you, COVID-19, you know, <laughs> I just want to say, instead of uh, getting bored sitting on the sofa all day or or just uh you know i wanted to be creative and so i opened my drawers and look into my archives and check what i had uh if i could get something together and there was a lot of songs there which i wrote from the past and for example live and let live the title song was written over 20 years ago with a friend of mine called Charlie Priceel. He's on the video you just saw playing the guitar. The uh -huh. <laughs> my co-writer. And uh, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> and that's part of a three, a three song thing, which forms one long song. And I took the middle part. Okay. So maybe one day I'll be able to record the whole thing. Uh, which would be <laughs> quite interesting, but anyway. Uh, there, then, so then COVID came and I started to fill up my time doing uh, duets and recording them and putting them on YouTube with my daughter, Juliana. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it, she was happy and we got some great reviews and stuff and we did some streaming live and, you know, but then there came a point where we were asked to do a CD, father and daughter, you know, and we went, oh, we don't have any songs. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. And so I said, okay, Juliana, let's just take a break now. And we, con we concentrate on writing songs, but not for a father and daughter thing. You have to do your first solo album. So we close, pull the curtain on the father and daughter duet, and I started working on my solo stuff. Then I hitched up with a guy in England, Newcastle. His name's Adrian Fisher. And we wrote some songs together via via internet, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, and then I I locked in with these two uh, Swiss guys, Cyril and Massimo, Cyril's uh -huh. guitar player, Massimo's uh, drummer. They have a, a studio called Power Play Studios, very well known, world known actually, yeah. near outside Zurich, near the near Little Lake. And uh, we did, in the end, we recorded. I I wrote songs with Charlie, with uh, Adrian Fisher, with Cyril, and with Marcy, together. And uh, we recorded everything in PowerPlay Studios, everything analog, on a, with a Neve desk, and using the Swiss tape machine with a Studer tape, you know? Yeah. And uh, the whole band working in one big room together, me behind the glass with 
you know, headphones and singing live together with them. And uh, it, it was such an amazing experience because it took me back to when I worked with Crocus in all the old school uh, studios, you know. Right. Okay, everything goes on Pro Tools in the end. It goes on Pro Tools. But, of uh, course, because it's modern, but uh, the, the yeah. process was old style. <laughs> <laughs> we we do all the old style stuff, and in the end, it lands in a Pro Tools. So it, so then oh, it becomes so if efficient to work with, on all the tracks because he records so many things and there's so many takes and to do all the fine tuning stuff. And then it was sent to Los Angeles for the yeah. mix. And uh, <clears throat> it went to Nashville for the final mastering. And we were happy immediately. Everybody was glad with the sound. I mean, you can turn it up as loud as you want and it sounds <laughs> better and better and bigger. <laughs> right, but um, so so you said that "Live and Let Live" was an old song, which is yeah. actually amazing because uh, it's it sounds current, you know. Also, yeah. for the the meaning of it. Um, so how Ooh, many yeah. how many you know new songs were written just for the Storace record, and how many you had in the closet, you know? Uh, from back, uh, from from yeah. the years, from your career that you yeah. collected through the years? I, I guess if you put everything together, it's about 35 to 40 songs. Wow. You know? So it, it was really uh, a process of elimination, uh, finding out which songs we're going to record in the studio. We only wanted to record 10 and then we recorded 11. <laughs> okay. So there's one one uh, song which is still unheard. It's 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 back in the schublade in the in the drawer, right. you know, waiting for the right opportunity, the future. You know. So so despite the lockdown, this wasn't a lonely writing process. So you, you this is no. a band this is a band effort. I mean the the final result. Yeah, oh, totally. I mean, we we uh, got together and worked on final arrangements and harmonies and, you know, the final keys and everything. Yeah. And I was even still writing bits and pieces of lyrics here and there and, you know, chopping and changing. You you, st you stay creative till, till it's finally done, you know. Yeah. Especially with the guitar solos. Oh, God, we recorded hundreds of guitar solos for, for all the songs together. And uh, but you, you, you hear it, you know, when that's yeah. the one, you know, it just touches you and you go, everybody goes, Whoa. wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. OK, <laughs> so you say that Charlie was, is, a, is an old friend of yours uh, since yeah. you You've written the songs, some of the songs, 20 years ago. What about the other guys? Are they friends or the connections were different? Adrian is actually, uh, I would say, a pre-lockdown connection. Uh -huh. And um, because he knew that, you know, well, Crocus is on a farewell tour. Uh -huh. uh, this is the right time to contact Mark and ask him if he needs any songs, you know or any um, idea, song ideas. And it so happened then I just got back in touch with him and said, you know, you said you had some ideas. Do you want to send some over? Just, yeah. send, me, just send me five and we'll see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's great. It's uh, emotional the way, you know, the chords and everything. And I can, it's it moves me. So I'm going to be able to write lyrics and put down some singing melodies on those and and then I asked him for more. So so he's a new contact. We're, we're already best of uh, internet friends, you know. Okay. 
we wanted to, to meet, you know, I would have flown over to Newcastle, but uh, then came COVID, you know. Of course, so you couldn't yeah. go. But a- actually, concerning the lyrics, since you're talking about that, and also, you know, some atmospheres in the sound, it se- they seem that they got very much influenced by the pandemic and, you know, what we were living. I mean, we all had, you know, a lot of time and a lot of reasons to reflect more on things in the past, in the past two years. So is this like your way to take things out, you know, uh, of your heart? Because it seems there's a connection. Well, there is. I mean, Live and Let Live is probably the closest you can get to, uh, because it's a song written 20 years ago against genocide, you know, Saddam Hussein. Yeah. And, um, you know, then came the Iraq thing and everything. Yeah. And, uh, and at the same time, I said, I won't put any names or any dates on it because it's actually, it's an open subject which can hit a lot of uh, uh, things, you know, like uh, yeah. race, racism, uh, you know, poverty and so many things, you know. Um, and then Lady of the Night is another one which was totally lockdown thing. And actually a lot that was happening in Italy at the time. Yeah. So, so tragic, you know. Yeah. And then um, and it's about, uh, well, Lady of the Night, I thought of Florence Nightingale, you know, this nurse who during the war, I, I don't know which war, um, but probably it wasn't the First or Second World War, even something, maybe Napoleonic War or whatever it was. But but the thing behind it is it's a nurse who uh, she gave her, her everything, you know, at night with her lamp, the lady of the lamp, yeah. go, going to these uh, soldiers who really needed uh, maybe bandages changed mm-hmm. and couldn't sleep, crying, whatever. And I thought, you know, of these um, COVID patients, um, you know, and, and how actually heroic it is and how selfless to to have such a job and do it with passion and not worry about uh, yourself being becoming the victim of the virus, you know. Right. Um, so the, so those those two are, are very close and, and uh, I guess there's some some stuff, lyrics in, in the other songs which uh, uh, allowed me to, to express feelings which I was having at the moment. And there's one, there's one song in particular. Uh, it's a blues number, mm. um, <clears throat> which ends up with like this angelic crescendo and finale. Yeah. And uh, and that's called "Time Waits for No One." You know. Yeah. It's again talking about how much time do we have, yeah. you know, and all these people that have worked hard and maybe. Uh, didn't didn't even risk to taking holidays and enjoying their lives because they were in situations where they just had to work and work to survive and right. stay alive and and then suddenly they're hit by something and they and they die and they haven't even lived yet you know yeah it's pretty sad you know um yeah so a lot of stuff like that. So. And another very current topic. But yeah. um, Mark, tell me about this. Um, how independent is this release? It is independent in a sense, as far as I'm concerned. Tell us, oh, you know, yeah. uh, how and why is it available in different countries with different timing? It's coming out now in the US, if I'm correct. It's so, already, it's, now it's out in the whole world. Okay. Since, since I guess about two weeks. But before we didn't have a, a distributor in the US yet. And then we found, uh, we hitched up with uh, indie mer- the indiemerchstore.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
IndieMerchStore, that's one word, dot com. Yeah. And uh, they're based in the USA. And now they're, they're providing, you know, distributing all over the world. And uh, you can go to my new homepage, uh, Storace. Uh, punto ha. Uh-huh. You say ha in it. You don't have a ha in Italy, right? <laughs> C-H. 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 Right. H. 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 It's the Swiss extension. Okay. And and they can <laughs> but they can find it also on Amazon and uh everything, well, right? I don't know. Did, didn't Amazon just collapse? <laughs> <laughs> I read something today today in the news. Okay, I I'm didn't. So <laughs> let's hope not. All right. Um, we, we we had it on Amazon and we were having problems actually. People okay. were ordering and mm-hmm. uh, not receiving. So, <laughs> so okay. They, luckily, we have indie merch store. Right. Com. And and the Storace uh, website. Okay. Yeah, uh, on the Storace website, you can see everything. You can see the band members, photos, and a little write up about each guy and all the concerts that are coming up ahead, and uh, the two videos that that we released so far. Yeah. And uh, any questions that you like, and it's in English and it's in German. All so right. far. About languages, actually, and about the lyrics. So you you are from Malta. Yeah. Then then you lived in Switzerland, and you know at least five languages, if I'm correct. You know English, you know German, you know Swiss German, you know Italian a bit, and you know Malti, Maltese, Maltese. Okay. Maltese, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, co- Mark composing um did it always come natural to you to write in english and do you think that you know being a polyglot helped you some way in the use of different rhymes and meter you know different colors in melodies and lyrics and even you know choosing the words uh the fact of having a large vocabulary <laughs> uh Well, I guess subconsciously something happens there. You you might be right, but not. I'm not conscious. I'm I'm when I'm writing. I'm I uh, go back to English mm. basically because that's when I started out writing. Uh, I was pretty young, but uh, things didn't make much sense. You couldn't use them. <laughs> but then you know, later on. And, I, and especially when after I joined T, you know, when I first came to Switzerland and joined the progressive rock band T. Yeah. That's when I really started to to write a lot, you know, uh, stuff which I used and stuff which I kept and used later on. Um, but basically, I, I I think in English when I'm when I'm writing, you know, I go, go back to. I, I wouldn't say Shakespeare, but <laughs> <laughs> you know that's nobody understands Shakespeare. <laughs> so, but uh, but I I did all the that in English literature at yeah. school, so I was I'm pretty influenced. You know. And Mark, you also come from a musical family, and yeah. s- still to this day, you know, your wife and uh, children sing, play, and support you, as you already said. Also, your daughter, Juliana. Yeah, I, rem- yeah. I remember those fantastic duets that you you posted during, you know, the lockdown, and they were oh, am- amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. What and, do th- and Luca, my son, Luca uh, plays drums. Oh. Yeah. I know that. I know that. And um, <laughs> but um, what do the whole family, you know, starting from your mom, who was a pianist, uh, always think, you know, about your rock and roll music and rock and roll lifestyle? Were they all supportive since the very beginning? Yeah, I, I would say um, when I was uh, of a young age. Uh, I was I started listening to uh, uh, the Beatles at, at home, and Stones, and and all the that's 
that's when my older brother bought a record player. Before then, I was only listening to uh, Radio Malta and Radio uh, BBC and BFBS, which we listened in Malta because of all the uh, NATO troops and airmen and seamen uh, stationed on the islands, which I used to entertain with my local bands, you know. Uh -huh. Thanks to that, we used to play about two or three times a week yeah. in summer. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, a thing of... Um, um, they they were kind of happy that I was doing doing this hobby, you know, singing as a hobby. And yeah. obviously, they wanted me to do a, a real job, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe working in the bank. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> much oh. safer one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, with a steady income, you know, so I could get married, have children, buy a car, a little house, or whatever. Yeah. Which you did, by the way, anyways. <laughs> I, did, I did anyway, but it took me a hell of a long time, and I I lived way under. Uh, I I lived close to the hunger. Uh, uh, limit, you know, with yeah. with uh, the band in band incomes we had because we had to pay our equipment, instruments, vehicles, and and everything. So, and there wasn't much coming in. You know, I'm talking now about the the tea days. We yeah. we did a tour, uh, a few tours every year, and we went out with uh, Nazareth, Status Quo. Um, and last but not least, with Queen. Yeah, you know, wow. That was uh, that that was historic. You know, it's it's like a a highlight in our resume, <laughs> if yeah. you like. You know, but no, my parents never kind of said don't stop doing it. You know, but it reached a point after I left school, and I hadn't done too well at school. That they probably realized. I was doing much more in the music scene and that when I, when I said I wanted to leave the island and go outside to the big world, uh, meaning fly to London because the connection yeah. in Malta, London because of British Commonwealth. Yeah. You know, we were a British colony with the same queen, the same pound shillings, pence, driving on the left side. Yeah. <laughs> you know, still today. And you know, with all the all that stuff, that I was culturally closer to to London actually than to Sicily or Italy. Yeah, in, right. For for that, and there was much happening musically there um, before I arrived. Because when I arrived, things were were changing. You know, big artists, idols were dying. You know, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Leonard Skinner. Mark Boland, the Beatles film Let It Be came out and I left the cinema in a depression. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they were my big idols, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I was, uh, I hitched up with this cover band and we, doing, we were doing a lot of kinks stuff, which I love the kinks, you know, those lyrics, the, the yeah. <laughs> amazing. Uh, but this wasn't enough. I was holding a day job doing the band uh, became too much physically mentally the weather in london so bam one day magic happened this beautiful swiss girl came up she was really nice we went out for a coffee and uh, a few months later i was in switzerland you know oh well, yeah and, and i joined the first band with nothing happened there and then the second band was tea and things started happening, you know, thanks to the producer of uh, the Scorpions, Dieter Dirks. Yeah. We worked with him up in Cologne. And uh, so for the first time, I was uh, living my dream. <clears throat> well, it didn't mean I had money and sports cars and, and fur coats and, and hundreds of, of uh, groupies. It was totally... <laughs> Nothing like that, you know. Uh -huh. uh, we we put, we invested everything back into the band, you know. But it was nice to 
be doing the real thing, you know, that was great for my spirit and it kept me going. And, and I knew I was going in the right direction. You know, right. each year a, a new album or every second year and um, doing the tours, writing songs with our own rehearsal room and stuff. Ah, great, great people in the band, talented guys, you know. And um, well, this came to an end and uh, yeah. I, I, I had met someone in, uh, um, we went to, to London together. And two and a half years after that, I had my band going, Easy Money, uh, of which there's only one track which ever made it to the public on Metal for Mothers Volume 2. All right. This was during the new wave of British heavy metal. And at the same time, I joined Crocus, you know. So I was back in Switzerland working with Crocus and flying back to live in London, you know, it's yeah. just commuting, you know. And, uh, and things started happening after Metal Rendezvous, my debut album with the band. Yeah. It was like a rocket, you know. And, right. and so for a little while, there was uh, one week uh, in the British metal charts, you know, sounds and melody maker and whatever. Uh, what else was there? Anyway, uh, in the in the metal charts, I was I was in there in in three places with a Telephone Man of Easy Money and two songs of Crocus, Heat Strokes and Bedside Radio, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and it was like, wow, it never rains, it pours, you know. <laughs> so at that point, you, you thought that you finally made it and your wife, uh, Cornelia, was happy about it. So, <laughs> okay, and the rest is history, let's And the see. rest is history, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Mark, since you talked about Lady of the Night, let's see the <laughs> video of that song, which is very touching indeed, as you explained, <laughs> you know, dedicated to health workers, which are our new eras. Um, the song is very inspired, so let's hear it and stick there for a few more questions after that. And we will be back with Mark. So Mark, there's some Italian blood in your veins. <laughs> is it correct? Because you know, strange That's origins, really you know, strange <laughs> origins of Storace uh, go to Genova or also Napoli, Palermo, Siracusa, a lot yeah. of Italian places. Yeah. Where is your family exactly from? Well, I, I, I guess it must be somewhere from I don't know, Rome, Naples, so the places you mentioned, uh, Palermo, there's, I know there was uh, Stephen Storace and Nancy Storace, they, they worked uh, with, with Mozart. Uh, Nancy was a singer, she was his favorite singer actually. Yeah. And uh, Stephen was her brother, and he wrote uh, music, and uh, even w which was performed in the Carnegie Hall. Yeah. So I, I guess you know there's something in the genes, which uh, because you know when you when I was already 14, 16, I asked, so why why did I become a singer? You know, okay, I come from a musical family, but that doesn't explain it all. To me you know and uh, so one day i'd like to uh, <laughs> if i have the time it takes a lot of time to try and follow the family tree but there's definitely i mean storace is it's, right it's very is a liberace versace storace so <laughs> the arce arce thing somebody i met an italian guy he told me that's from calabria it means uh, uh health uh healers yeah Arce. and so, also you know that storace is a flower in italy just oh, like crocus is a flower so oh. you know you know sometimes destiny plays tricks you know <laughs> <laughs> so I, i'm ending up I'm, I'm still an old hippie you know so yeah it fits that i'm uh, you know hanging with flowers yeah that that makes sense but yeah. you know you know with uh, this origin uh, in italian origins but you never came to play in italy very often you know despite also we are neighbors 
uh, with I Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but that you know that that's not something musicians organize. It's yeah. These are these are things. I mean, I came with Crocus. I I came the most, yeah. and I even came with T when we played a festival in Naples and. And the first time actually I ever went to a festival in my whole life, I was uh, about 17 or 18, um, was with two band members from my Maltese band. Mm -hmm. And we came, went to Palermo, you know, took the boat and the train, a long, <laughs> long ride. And it was <laughs> mid-summer, very hot. Um, and we, we went to a Palermo uh, festival music right. festival and there was everything in there that's the first time when i when i actually saw toad which later on how destiny kind of matched me up again with vittorio verja mm -hmm. uh, who with whom i did the blue album he's from domodos solaido yeah and this was during the time that i was singing with t and there was uh, actually arthur brown you know, singing fire, doof, doof, da, da, da. Yeah. I wish you would burn, doof, doof, da, da, da. Da, 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 fire. <laughs> I thought this, this was such a great song, and I still think it's a great song. And he did something incredible, you know, it's like there were the, cam the guy kneeling with the camera and cameras everywhere, and they already had yeah. screens in those days, back yeah. in the 60s. And he pulled down his pants and <laughs> crazy guys, crazy guy. And the police came on stage and and took him away, you know. Oh, then he wow. he came again. I guess they let him do one one or two more songs. Then he put on the this helmet with a with fire coming out. All right. So. The top. And they started doing the hit. And then some somehow it fell down on stage and the whole thing started to burn they came out with fire extinguishers. oh my god uh, oh, kind of... what an experience all right and, and after that you know who played duke oh. ellington duke ellington with a oh, whole wow. big band incredible wow. you know wow. we were just enjoying all these all this music and after that i was really hooked you know i thought uh, this is all this stuff is happening out here already so close you know great uh, memories so you must come to italy much often <laughs> I, I i was in italy in january before the lockdown i was in rome okay and uh, we went there and we walked and walked and walked we love walking and uh, it was, we walked everywhere almost. All right. And sometimes we took the horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Carlo, one of our listeners, as Marco said, um, wrote to us that you are one of the best, most incredible hard rock and metal singers of all time. And I wanted to connect, you know, to that because I, I must, you know, I must add that you haven't lost an ounce in your voice zero that's perfect like in the early days big Thank passion you. you know big passion a lot of power to this day and you've always given it all through the years so uh yeah. it's actually incredible that that voice is still there and it's even even ba getting better like old you know old one <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it i mean what's the secret behind you know maintaining such a great shape through the years Thank in you. your voice well actually um um i like my red wine i like <laughs> i like my grappa uh, i drink a lot of water I drink a lot of aqua minerale. Mm -hmm. I, I take out the gas, you know. I only <laughs> like it a little prickly, you know. And you know, maybe it's because I grew up in in the Mediterranean. Because they say singers that that grew up close to the sea, um, you know, maybe it's the salty air or whatever. Ah. They turned out to to have. Uh, strong voices i don't know caruso lived in naples and uh, <laughs> pavarotti i don't know uh, but i'm not comparing myself to this you know but but um uh, my father was a tenor actually mm. 
il signor Storace, <ride> mio, mio babbo. <ride> Era un tenore, eh, niente yeah. meno. Oh, ok, so. Yeah. so uh, And I, well, I take care, I don't go to uh, any excesses, you know, uh, I like to party, as you know, yeah. <laughs> but then I, I quieten down, I, I try to keep a good balance, you know, I'm a, I'm a Libra like you, you know. Yeah, yeah right. So exactly. one night I'm totally partying and the next morning I'm not even talking, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, that's the trick. That's that's good. And also uh, you 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 remained a very genuine person, which oh, is yeah. very rare as well. You know, a real great professional uh but still having a great time. Um yeah, what I what enjoy that. Yeah, and we see that, you know, it arrives. Uh, what keeps your feet on the ground after so many years? Well, I've been through a lot of ups and downs, you know, and uh, and I know that after every down there comes an up, um, and after every up comes another down. So I guess I don't like to uh, overdo it, overdo it with, uh, with uh, losing my modesty, you know, Um, and I believe in uh, what goes around comes around, you know, karma. Yeah. So these things keep me in balance. They're in my, in my head, you know. I I grew up as a as a hippie, you know, in the 60s, and we, you know, doing the yoga and and all this meditation stuff, and and uh, even reading uh, Kahil Gibran and all the wisdom that I could take in. And so I guess some of that uh, stayed with me, you know, a little bit. And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not so obsessed like I was in the old days. Mm -hmm. In the old days, I used to uh, uh, I used to have to know people's zodiac signs, their date of birth and find out their ascendant and go into this astrology thing. And, you know, but I, I think, you know, experience in life, um, when you, you know, when you get, you know, you know, destiny slaps you in the face and right. you get up again. I, I think that's how you mature in life. And uh, that's what scares me about a lot of uh, young people today. Um, you know, the our parents had to work so hard. Uh, you know, to make a living and then came the war and after that came uh, the, the, the uh, um, yeah. post-war babies yes. and, that. and they produced more babies and they had the, the next generation had everything ready, you know, they, they yeah. came into a world, world with color TV and, and yeah. <laughs> you know, they had everything and um, it's like when you have nothing to fight for. I think you lose maybe a little bit of respect for for things and that's dangerous, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark, you also starred in two feature films, Anouk and Handyman. Ah. How, how did that happen? What's, uh, what's actually similar to rock and roll, you know, in an actor performance? And uh, maybe it takes more or less discipline? And why was it just a sort of interlude in your career and you didn't, you know, continue on that path? Well, uh, I think the first time you go on television to do an interview or, or play a song with your band, even if it's a cover song, you start to become really self self conscious and w watch your actions. You want to see w when you did that, how did it look and stuff like that. So th that's the beginning of things, you know. And it's the same thing when, when I recorded my voice, when I heard my recorded voice for the first time, I thought, is that me? <laughs> sounds sounds really bad. You know, and then you, you go on uh, to doing the first video with your band, you know, record company spends money into that. And, and for me, then it, it, I think the high point was screaming in the night of mm -hmm with Crocus, where I really had to, to act, you know. Yeah. I, I really gave my best to do, do it good. 
and uh, to portray my emotions through through my you know just when you move an eyebrow or <laughs> do an expression of yeah <laughs> you know all this stuff then you're uh, already acting you know yeah so and, so it so came natural <laughs> it kind of came natural because i i watch a lot of movies uh, i always did since i was young well when i was still in malta we i used to watch uh, even like for example a guy like margot surli remember him yes of course uh, Kino <laughs> Doro. yeah exactly all that you know all these expressions and the, then there was uh, these two funny guys because for a while we only had italian television in malta and black and white there was these two funny guys chicho abaudo or something like that uh, you, mean, you mean you uh... mean Ciccio and Garcia and Franco Franchi, those two. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah, okay. Exactly. Of course, two great I mean, actors. Guys, like, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Express, you know, all these funny expressions. And then when the Beatles started doing those those things on movies and, and photographs, you know, so it, it became this thing where, well, I kind of wished I had the opportunity to to do more of that. So when I was asked to do the, the movies, it was like, yeah, let's do it, let's go. And, um, but then I, I uh, kind of got back into the reunion thing with Crocus and stuff. And uh, it was all music again, you know, and even when we did the videos, uh, we tried um, to, to use uh, like symbolic, things to represent the band, the band like the, this this bulldog we used for dirty dynamite you know yes sure yeah, and, so, uh, uh, and for what we covered for example uh keep on rocking in the free world yeah keep on rocking in the free world yeah i have the t-shirt of that <laughs> uh, okay and then uh uh, so, so there's this this young guy with a skateboard uh, in the middle yeah. of London, and uh, it's not actually one of us. We're not like acting anymore. But, but now that I'm doing a solo thing, I'm open again to to offers. So, if you have any ideas, any offers, anybody out there, you want me to do a, uh, be a co-actor with Adriano Celentano? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there in a New York minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll have the chance to do more in the next few with this new beard that you have. Oh, and, yeah. And it's yeah. So white. It was so white, right? <laughs> My hairdresser said, it's amazing. <laughs> I never knew that, you know. <laughs> and he said, There's, there aren't many people who have such a white beard with a guy with, because you're from right. the South, you have. You know, <laughs> I said, why is this, you know? It uh, was um, maybe, did my mother come from the Vikings? Because... Uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. On the other side of my family, it's it's from England, you know, yeah. Crockford. Yeah. But, uh, the, well, it sounds English, it could be Scottish, I don't know. Uh, so I'm really split, you know. <laughs> yeah, and about Scottish and about English, uh, very quick, I must, you know, ask you that. You and Bon Scott are like twins separated at birth. Did you ever think, you know, how life would have been if that call from ACDC arrived? Or maybe it actually arrived and you declined. We will never know. But did you ever actually think to yourself, you know, what would have happened? Well, I, I really, it, that's a hip, hypothetical <laughs> question. Uh, is that what you what you call them? It's like a question which is like, um, it it it's all open to fantasy and dreams, but reality can take a different direction, you know. Yeah. And and at that moment, I thought, well, you know, I'm sitting on my high horse enjoying success 
with Crocus. We had my debut album, Metal Rendezvous, went like a rocket, and we 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 did Hardware, and we had uh, actually a, a brand new light show which arrived from Birmingham. And the CEO of that company in Birmingham, it's like every, but the whole hard rock scene was, uh, the center was Birmingham, you know, yeah. Led Zeppelin and everyone else. Uh, and ACDC, they were all, all doing their production stuff there. And, and the guy took me to the side, you know, the CEO, and of because he drove down to show us this new light show computer, you know, which we'd never seen one like before. that before. Yeah. <laughs> and then he took me on the side and said, you know, would you like to audition for ACDC? I said, Steve, I'm so happy here. Uh, things are happening and we're going to go places. And these are my new mates. You know, I, I had a kind of loyalty. I was really thankful that, uh, that I joined Crocus because it, it suddenly happened, you know, and I had been trying in many different ways and even with T though we had enjoyed an amount of success there was nothing like what we achieved later on with Crocus so looking back at this little guy in Malta <laughs> where, where there's no record companies no 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 big uh, rock rock and roll life you know in no tours the way I dreamed of and everything and, and looking at Switzerland, where actually it's more known for the banks and the chocolates and the water <laughs> than hard rock bands. Yeah. <laughs> and seeing how far that Crocus got to, I think we, we should be thankful. And that's the way I feel. I feel thankful for what I've achieved with these guys. And, and the the thing about ACDC is uh, kind of it's not not realistic to to think that way when you think why I decided that way. Okay. And I wouldn't change I wouldn't change a minute, you know. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. 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 I'm happy. I I have a loving wife. I have two beautiful children. They're intelligent. They're, they're doing their own thing. I have a my own house, uh, car, you know, ambassador for Peugeot, and it's it's great to be alive, and that's why I'm doing my solo album, and I don't want to stop, you know. And as you said, you're about to tour, so we will hope you yeah. you will come to Italy this time with Storace. Uh, and I, well, you see, we never choose where we want to go. Yeah, no. <laughs> But we, we 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 wait for offers. Our yeah. manager, our booker, our booker is good news. Uh, a big uh, booking company in, in, uh, in Zurich. And my manager is actually Raleigh Egley, the drummer of T. Yeah. <laughs> So it's a it's a small world. It's a big family and a small world. That's yeah. the, that's no, the best. <laughs> Ti prego, Italia, chiamami eh, <laughs> al booking perché, perché voglio cantare per voi eh, i, mie, i miei canzoni e pochi crocus canzoni eh, per voi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Mark, we are, we are closing this interview with um, a Crocus medley from uh, uh, okay. back 2007 when you announced the reunion, which is Tokyo Nights, Bedside Radio and Heat Strokes, three classics in a medley. Um, okay. Do you, Can you announce that and actually maybe with a short, very quick memory, the best that you have of that period, you know, when the classic lineup came back together. And will you play some Crocus classics with Storace during the tour with Corleone? Um, well, I have something on something in on on the in mind, you know. I'm I'm gonna actually, but I I don't think it's good to tell you now. <laughs> It's got to be a surprise, and actually, you know, I I don't want to play any Crocus uh, hits from Europe. I I, uh, I picked a Crocus hit, which was a hit in the USA, for example, 
Uh, okay. One. And Crocus never played it here, uh, the reunion Crocus, I mean. And, uh, and another old Crocus song, which we played a lot and then stopped playing, and I love playing it. So I'm taking the opportunity of bringing songs which people in Europe haven't heard by Crocus, uh, haven't heard me sing, and I'd like to uh, perform them again for myself and for our fans. So, yeah, and uh, that that medley, that th uh, three-minute medley, which brought us together, was uh, amazing. Uh, it was uh, <coughs> Tokyo Nights, Heat Strokes, and Bedside Radio. Right. And uh, we got such a big standing ovation. It just gave us uh, goosebumps. Yeah. And uh, the, we had kind of broken a new barrier with a point of no return, you know. Right. It was nice. Okay, so thanks, Mark, for your time. So let's rewind the tape a bit and then let's go back to 2007 with Crocus. Always a pleasure to have you and can't wait, you. can't wait to see you again on stage and in person. Grazie, Mark. Grazie a te, Barbara. <laughs> Uh, ciao a tutti. Ciao, see you very soon. Thank you yeah, very much. Hopefully, and, ciao. Bye. Thank buy you. The, and buy the album, Storace. Leave it. Oh, yeah, here. don't forget. <laughs> uh, you can get it on uh, www indie. Wait a minute. Merch. Indie merch. <laughs> indie okay. Store.com. Okay. Grazie. Let's go on my homepage, storace.ch. Perfect. Grazie. Right. Ciao Mark, see you next time. Take care. Grazie. Ciao.